Dama Freeman of CopBlock.org was on trial today for three counts of wiretapping. Updates were coming in via Twitter at the hashtag pound sign free a demo. Ian Freeman tweeted, the government school principal claims that she is not a public official. She also stated that she believes the safety of the students is not at issue with a police officer on staff who was caught on film attacking a student. Daryl Perry tweeted that Captain Hopkins admits <clears throat> his actions would not have been different if he, was, if he knew he was recorded. He also tweeted that the jury was instructed to disregard the potential punishment. Clyde Voluntarius tweeted that Adamo was <coughs> allowed to argue jury nullification and the judge instructed that the jury that if they found him guilty they could acquit. At 3 p.m. Adamo was found guilty on all three counts and sentenced to 12 months with nine months suspended. Good behavior for five years with one to three years in state prison. This is concurrent with his uh, current sentence. So uh, you and I both went to this trial, and uh, it was it was an interesting one. It was probably the most dramatic trial I've ever been to, just because uh, a lot of people showed up for this. Uh, people who are into jury nullification, uh, news sh uh, news reporters, and you know just supporters of a demo and cop lock, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people uh, realized I think the story was more about the government covering up police brutality and trying to uh, throw a wiretapping charge in it to try to distract from the real issue. And so um, I think it was hard to point that out to the jury that this is really about police brutality. And uh, Right, right. I thought it was real interesting that they, they didn't want to allow, uh, they say it wasn't relevant or whatever, but the, um, the video footage of the police officer slamming uh, the kids face into the table that that right there was a demo's motive for committing that crime um, so you know like that should which have been is like just calling to, to follow up on it which is what reporters are supposed to do and uh, he did in each call I, I, just, I thought it was um, you know just a little frustrating because the the way the evidence stacked up it really seemed like um, you know, if, as we've talked about on the show before, in uh, a lot of trials, they want to uh, tell the jurors just to focus on the, on facts, the facts of the, the case, case right. whatever those are. And I don't even think I, I, I don't even like the word facts because I think people misuse that word all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just the information that someone wants you to pay attention to. And it could be misleading or it could be omitting certain things that are more important. But, um, I thought it was always in interesting that the, uh, the judge will say, well, I'm going to give the jury instructions on how to, uh, d you know, how, how, to, how to decide this person's fate. Uh, the person is not allowed and has not been allowed to use their conscience. So I don't know. I think, it's, uh, I think it was interesting, though, that the government, or that the government, excuse me, that the, the judge allowed uh, um, a demo to bring up jury nullification, even though it wasn't effective until uh, January first next year. But do you um, do you think that the reason that the jurors uh, decided to uh, call guilty was? Uh, I start to wonder if it's because just maybe it's easier to follow directions than to think critically or about you know how do I feel about the situation. It I was honestly surprised that it was guilty in all three counts. I thought maybe like guilty, not guilty, guilty or something, but just plain out completely guilty really shocked me. Right. I, I unfortunately was thrown out uh, near the first or second half, so I didn't get to see it. But, um, but yeah, he, uh, uh, it, it was pretty surprising. Um, I, I really expected him actually to be clear of all of it. Um, I, I thought somebody would have used their conscience and acquitted this man of a, a victimless crime. Mm -hmm. uh, I also noticed uh, a lot of logical fallacies. The prosecution was using appeals to authority left and right, um, just uh, basically enshrining the law as if if you find this man not guilty, then you don't care about law. You don't care about murder or theft or any right. uh, victim, like crime w in which victims were involved. It's not the same thing. and. Uh, as a juror, I would be insulted if someone tried to make a correlation between this case and a murder case. But I think that uh, when we use vague terms, or sorry, when uh, we talk about the law 
and the way uh, it's used. I like what Pete said. He's like, I like to differentiate between law and legislation. Right. And there's there's God, natural and common law, and mm -hmm. then there's legislation. There's this statute, and it's. Uh, but you can't explain this whole philosophy to a jury within the time of you know that would right. that would start to get like really drawn out, and uh, you know I could understand why it would be difficult to try to. Um, make these distinctions, but I think that they do matter. Mm, I, I, you know, I think someday it'd be interesting uh, with courts if they were to allow us, well, if it's really a, uh, a jury of our peers, then can I call some people to, <laughs> you know, like, I'm, all right, you've got your guys, well, I've got mine here too. Um, I'm, these, mm -hmm. are, these are my peers that I'd like to uh, introduce the jury pool. Right. And, and we can pick through those, you know. I just start to wonder at some point if it's uh, pointless to try to use, um, like, I, I like the idea of jury nullification because it allows for some conscious to come into it. It mm -hmm. allows for that, but I, I, it might, you know, either that or maybe the you know, dispute resolution service will just be privatized before that ever happens just because, right. you know, when you're in, uh, when you go into court, you're in, in their building and uh, it is easier just to do whatever they say. And the judge is, you know, the ultimate rule, and he he does tell the jurors to, you know, just, you know, look at if this person broke the law by the letter of the law. Right by the legislation. Mm -hmm. know, so which is, um, yeah. So it's 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 entirely ridiculous though that he, uh, um, they they didn't use their conscience and and see that this person was not guilty of an actual crime. But well, maybe we can hope for better in the future. Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next week for another installment of Shire TV. For more news and analysis, I'm Bo Davis. And I'm Allie Havens. May you each find happiness, peace, and prosperity. I don't no regret what I did. I uh, fully was aware of what I did, and I uh, think that jails weren't built for people who make phone calls or use chalk. And, uh, you know, maybe there'll come a time where this court will have to make a decision on whether using up uh, the government's resources on the bed I will occupy, to, uh, as opposed to somebody who's actually violent. My, uh, Michael brings up my intentions. You know, my intentions are about transparency and accountability, something that doesn't seem too popular in government these days. So uh, it's not about uh, disrupting things or, or violating laws. I mean, well, certainly bad laws like this one, but. Um, there's going to be no rehabilitation for me. I'm not ever going to think that what I did was wrong. So if you think deterring me from trying to be an activist by locking me up in jail, you can go ahead and think that, but uh, I don't think it's going to work. I don't know. I should let me go home. <laughs> <laughs>